Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I am making a fire inspired soap. I have got this fragrance oil. It's called Crackling Firewood. Got it on Wholesale Supply Plus. Um, and it really does smell like a bonfire or a fireplace wood burning. And I have had so many requests from guys and girls. Do you have anything that smells like a campfire? Do you have anything that smells like a fireplace? And so I found this fragrance and it really does smell true to it. I'm hoping it comes through in the finished soap because uh, that would be awesome if it does. So today I am going to be doing a um, pointy swirl, which is you basically drop the soap in small thin lines and um, it makes sort of a point. The point is to make the soap look like a flame. I'm gonna start with activated charcoal in the bottom and go red, orange, yellow for the flames coming up. That's the plan, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I've got a basic recipe today and I'm gonna be adding some coconut milk powder in there with my colloidal oats and kale and clay just to add some richness to it. Um, so I'm gonna pull everything together, get my hair pulled back, my safety gear on, and let's come back and make some fire inspired soap. Also, if you enjoy my videos, please hit the like and subscribe button. That would be wonderful. And also, I'm on Instagram. If you want more up-to-date pictures and soaping inspiration, go check that out, too. Thank you. So I've got all of my oils uh, melted and cooled off in here. And um, I just have to say, I love working with cocoa butter. It smells so good. Uh, anyway, there's the oils. And to this, I'm going to add my additives which is I have organic colloidal oats, I have kale and clay, and I have some coconut milk powder. And that's what I'm gonna be adding in here. And we'll just blend that in really well, and then I will probably go ahead and add my fragrance in here as well, just to get it blended really good in everything. Oops, and I need electricity for this. There we go. All right, and now I'm going to add my crackling firewood fragrance in here. And it really does smell like a fire. It's a tough fragrance to nail, and I think they did a great job. Um, Wholesale Supply Plus, Crafter's Choice. It really does. It smells like a campfire. I'm so excited. I hope that it sticks in the soap and hangs around, because if it does, I think especially the dudes are gonna love this, but I love it too. So I'm just going to get the fragrance blended in and then we will go ahead and split off for our colors to do our pointy swirl is my attempt today. Just sort of want a little flame effect in there. Here's the colors that I'm going to be using for my flame. So I have activated charcoal that I'm going to do in the bottom, uh, sort of the wood base I guess to give it an overall darkness. And then for the red I'm going to use this uh, matte Americana red for the red portion of my flame just straight up. It's just a nice dark red. Now, my orange, <laughs> I had to get creative. I only had a teeny bit of this electric orange left, so I put that in there. Uh, it was just shy of a teaspoon, probably, and to that I added probably about a quarter teaspoon of this Tangerine Wow, because it's in the orange range, and then to, to mute that down, I added this matte yellow oxide, probably about a half a teaspoon of that. So it's these, those three things mixed together to get my orange portion for the flame. Yes, I do need to order more micas. <laughs> Actually, I did this morning, I ordered more micas. So that's my orange portion. And then for the yellow, I'm using straight up Love and Sunshine uh, yellow here, which is a nice bright yellow. And I believe that uh, this fragrance oil, um, yeah, they said that it discolors to a light yellow color anyway. So it's not going to, it's just a mild discoloration. So I think that'll just sort of go along with the whole flamey colors. Okay, and to my lye water, I have Tussa Silk Fibers and Sodium Lactate is what I've got going in here. And of course, I have the coconut milk powder already blended into the oils to give it some richness. I just can't seem to resist adding a little something something in there. So I'm going to be hand stirring this until I get each of the colors ready to go so I'll have a little more control over the whole, hopefully, over the whole event here. Um, and this uh, fragrance oil, uh, they said that it does not accelerate trace, so that is a good thing. 
Make sure it's well and incorporated. Boy, this fragrance is really true to a campfire smell, and I'm very familiar with bonfires. Um, our family, when we moved to Tennessee and my husband had retired from the Marine Corps, uh, we bought a piece of raw land and we bought a sawmill and felled our own trees and we built a cordwood cottage. And uh, with that was a lot of burn piles and it was a wonderful little cottage. It was tiny for us and we ended up having to sell that property. But quite an experience. My boys and my husband just worked so hard. I mean, we dug our own septic. They did all the electrical. Uh, it was quite a it was the biggest homeschool project we ever did. We built a house, literally, from raw land. <laughs> but campfire smell, it's very nostalgic for me. Love it. All right, so there is gonna be my charcoal portion. Oh, I hate it when the spatula goes in here and gets soap on the handle. It happens all the time. All right, let me scoot that out of the way and get our activated charcoal here, which, you know, it's a great black color and it's good for your skin, so it's perfect for this. I think I'm just going to do one teaspoon, nice heaping teaspoon, and I'll go ahead and blend this since it's the bottom layer and I don't mind if it gets a nice little trace going here. There's our mold. Pretty simple we're just going to pour this in and then I'm going to mix a little more black in here and do a drop swirl with the first colors and then we'll go individual colors if that makes sense you'll see when I do it so I'm not super concerned about scraping this container out too much because I'm just going to mix a little more black in here now for my next layer so scoot this off to the side and we'll get on here to our next layer, which means I need all of my colors. So I need one more container here. There we go. I wish I only have two of these. I need to get some more of these with these little pour spouts. They're wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful.
All right, so before I stamp these, I wanna show you something that happened. Super bummed about it. Um, so I colored and stick blended the black, the red, the orange, and the yellow. Well, I didn't stick blend um, a portion that I knew the fragrance discolored to yellow. And what happened is I didn't stick blend it. And so it's a little rougher texture, these little pockets at the top. So I got curious and I took out my little pH strips there. I got these on Amazon and they have a little color coding. So straight up lye is uh, sodium hydroxide is 14. And then down here, you have al it goes from acidic to alkali on the little color scale. And you take these little strips and you wet your soap and lather it and you put the strip on. And I got curious about those pockets. So this bar, I did that. I lathered up the area, set the test strip on, and it is heavier in, it's not heavy in lye, but it's more lye in those pockets. So let me show you on here. Around eight or 10 is a good thing. So the base of the soap was definitely in the green range there. And then the heavy part was at the 10. So it's still lie safe. It's not lie heavy. It's not up here in the purple where you're straight up sodium hydroxide. It's definitely in the 10 range there. So it's safe to use, but it's a good cautionary tale for blending and not under blending. Plus it kind of takes away from the cosmetics of this. I. It's a beautiful soap. I'm so happy with how the flames came out, but that to me is distracting. So I'm not sure what the fate of these bars will be. I think they're still cool. They smell really good. Um, they're safe. They're not lie heavy, but I think it's a detractor. So that is just, you know, the bummer of it. And at the end of this video, I talked about the cordwood cottage that we built. I'll throw a couple of photographs at the end. If you stick around to the very end, uh, you get to see what we built, the house we built. All right, so after a few days of deliberating and angsting over my not so fortunate unmixed portion at the top, what I've decided to do is lop that part off. Um, I'm just not comfortable with that and I don't like how it looks. So something cool here, look how cool the morph is from that color to that color inside. So this will all cure out darker, but um, I just thought that was kind of pretty inside. So they're gonna be little small four ounce squares, fire cubes is what we're gonna end up with. So let me show you how I'm doing it. I'm just taking the lowest point that's uh, showing and bring my cutter down. And these I'm just gonna throw away. I'm not even gonna rebatch them. And then I'm trimming up, I'll show you. Trimming up the sides here on the new tops. Anyway, I thought the inside was really cool. And these do, they retain the fire smell. I love this fragrance oil and I'm gonna attempt this again and I will not fall for the problem of under mixing, cautionary tale. Emulsify your soap really well, or you will end up with funky little cubes. <laughs> so anyway, it's not all a loss. These are adorable, and I'm just going to get the rest of these all cut up and trimmed, and um, that is the tail on these bars.